What's going on everybody? Marvel the Cross 316 back with another comic book flashback today folks. We are looking at the Invincible Iron Man issue number three as we continue to look at the first volume of this series here folks. We're going to be looking at Iron Man number three. This issue came out in July of 1968 folks and we're going to... So that's going to be pretty cool, folks. And so Iron Man is going to be fighting his best friend. He is the fearsome freak. Now, who could be the freak? That actually is Happy Hogan. And we'll find out how Happy Hogan becomes the freak. And so today's title is My Friend, My Foe, The Freak. And so we start out the issue here. We have Iron Man, and he is coming back. From his big fight with that Demolisher. Remember when he fought the Demolisher last issue. And he's feeling disappointed because he feels like he is responsible for Janice Cord's father's death. Remember it was Janice Cord's father that created the Demolisher robot. And because of that incident that happened last issue. We saw that that robot was responsible for the death of of Janice Cord's father. And Janice Cord is someone that Tony Stark is seeing at the moment. She, she is a love interest. And so today's title is brought to you by Stan Lee, who wrote this issue. We have Archie Goodwin and Johnny Craig as well contributing to this issue. And then Artie Samek on the lettering page. So let's now continue the story here. There is an explosion at this rocket construction site. Iron Man is alerted about it, and he's going to have to make a quick rescue here to save these people. And so that's exactly what we're going to see here, as um, these people have been trained in what to do when it comes to danger. Um, they've had these protocols in the past here, folks. And so what we're going to see is they're like, get an ambulance, someone get an ambulance. We, we gotta, you know, we gotta help these people out. And so we see that this rocket is about to fall on top of these people. A scaffolding has come loose. And the only person that's going to be able to save these people and stop the rocket from crushing these people is Iron Man. And now this is a humongous ro rocket, by the way. So you've got to keep that in mind. So Iron Man gets in there in the nick of time. His jet propellers are about to run low on um, their... They basically are low because of the fight he had with the Demolisher last issue. And so this is going to have a huge strain on the heart of Iron Man. Remember, Tony Stark is Iron Man. And you can see right here just how heavy this rocket is. And the more weight that's being applied on Iron Man, the more his heart is going to give out. And so we see here... That everybody is able to escape. This guy says, Iron Man, we did it. Every man is out and safe. So that leaves him to lead the rocket to just slam. And I mean, he leaps out of the way. He doesn't even, you know, put it down nicely. He couldn't because the strain that is going on his chest. And this is going to have a much bigger effect than he thought. This holding the rocket for that amount of time to save those people. I mean, at this point, Iron Man can't even talk. He can't say anything. He can't thank the people or anything. And people are like, what's going on? How about that? He saves our skins, but he's too modest to stick around and be thanked. And so we see that even Iron Man's not even in the mood to talk with um, what we see here. Remember, this is Sitwell here. He was. He is a... Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and we met Whitney Frost last issue because we saw that um, Jasper Sitwell was able to save Whitney Frost last issue. Iron Man has no uh, intentions of talking with Jasper Sitwell. He is weak, he's hurting, and we see Sitwell's like, how about that? What the heck is going on with Iron Man? Why don't he even speak to me? He just kept on walking. Well, if he would have known 
that is actually Tony Stark in this armor. And Tony Stark has to get um, charged in his chest here. That is what gives him strength. Is There's this cord here that allows him to charge. But when he comes to, we find out that his chest is still in pain here. He's still feeling weak. And so what he's realized here is that this entire time while he's been fighting supervillains, he has not been able to make an upgrade in his armor. And because of that, now the chest device that he uses to heal himself is just not going to work. And so now he's stuck in this situation where he can't go anywhere. He can't unplug himself from this chest device or he'll die. And so he has to tell everybody um, that he's going to have to cancel all his meetings. I mean, he has important meetings with these people, and he has to cancel them all, um, and he's not able to even tell them exactly why. And so he, this he's like, it's a hopeless situation for Tony Stark. He said, it mustn't end like this for Tony Stark and Iron Man. So what is Tony Stark going to do? Well, there's only one person that knows... The identity of Iron Man, and that is Happy Hogan, and he is married to Pepper Potts, and we see that Pepper Potts and Happy Hogan used to work for Tony Stark back in the day, and so we see that Happy Hogan gets the newspaper, sees that Tony Stark is in seclusion, and he's going to go check up on his pal, along with his wife Pepper Potts, we see that Tony Stark is working on some plans here on how to develop his new armor, but it's hopeless because he can't even construct it for himself. And so what we see here is that one of um, Tony Stark's secretaries says, Mr. Stark, uh, Sitwell here, sir. Actually, this is Sitwell. And he says, there's a couple here who insist on seeing you. The gentleman seems violent. And we see Tony Stark is like, no, do not let him in. I said no one can come in. But then he realizes that this is actually Happy Hogan, the only one that shares his secret. And so he tells Jasper Sitwell that actually he can come in, but only him. And so Happy Hogan is going to be pretty much briefed on what's happened here. And Happy Hogan is going to be given the responsibility to create this new Stark armor, this new Iron Man armor, and this is the first time he's ever done this. So he goes back to Pepper and tells her, look, it's going to be a while. I can't tell you exactly why, but you just go on home. But she says no, she's not going to go. She's going to wait here for her husband. And so we see that Happy Hogan is given this helmet that has the speaker inside, so Tony Stark is able to speak to Happy while he creates this armor, and he's given every um, every instruction he needs to create this new armor, and he's pretty much successful in creating this new armor, when all of a sudden, that chest device is losing its power here, and Tony Stark's chest is beginning to hurt even more, so Happy Hogan has to speed up the process, and in the in the midst of that, he is caught in the, in the midst of this Cabolt Bombarder, and that, that Cabolt Bombarder is going to affect Happy Hogan, as we soon see. And Happy races down the hallway, puts on that armor. He doesn't feel a pulse on Tony Stark, but we see Happy Hogan, the effects of that Cabolt Gizmo is starting to have effects on him, and this is where he's going to change into the Freak. Now, this is not the first appearance of the Freak. The Freak actually first appeared in Tales of Suspense, issue number 74. And so now Iron Man has to deal with this threat. And we see now Happy Hogan is the Freak, and he takes Iron Man and throws him. And now he's after his wife, Pepper Potts. He's going to kidnap Pepper Potts here. And no one is able to stop the Freak. Only Iron Man is able to stop him. And so, see, Iron Man gets back to his feet now, and he feels 100% now, thanks to his new armor that's been placed on him. It looks exactly the same, but I guess it has some new gadgets on it. 
and he learns that the redhead girl, which he knows as Pepper, has been kidnapped. So Iron Man is going to go and rescue Pepper, and he has to fight his best friend, even though he doesn't want to. So we see the Freak and Iron Man are going to fight each other. And, I mean, the Freak is hes pretty hard to take down, as we soon see here. And Iron Man's going to have to tell the cops that you cannot open fire. At all costs, let me handle it. So Iron Man is going to have to figure out a way to defeat the Freak here. And so he finally saves Pepper Potts at this construction site, puts her down, and they're going to go inside this truck, and he wants the Freak to follow him inside this truck. The Freak gets inside, and they close the door, and soon there is this gas, this mist, that's released inside the truck, and it finally has its effects on the Freak. The Freak passes out, and Iron Man is then going to take, um, as we soon see, Happy Hogan back to his facility to change him back to his normal self, and we know that now Pepper Potts has realized that the Freak is actually her husband. And so that is how we end this pretty cool, unique issue here. We see that it was a life or death situation for Tony Stark, and his best friend came through, but there was a cost. And so next issue, folks, we'll be looking at issue number four. We see the unicorn is going to make an appearance here. So that's going to be pretty cool. Hope to see you then, and go ahead now, give this video a like. Comment down below what you liked about this issue. Subscribe if you have not, and I will see you all in the next one.